Okay. Uh, without further ado, we will begin the the webinar. Hi, my name is Edmund. I'm the uh, product manager for the data analytics and generative AI and uh, digital literacy. Uh, thank you for coming to our uh, NQC Learning Hub webinar series. Okay, today we're going to have this uh, interesting session on optimizing your approach to generative AI. As you know that nowadays the generative AI is the buzz and how we can actually uh, see how generative AI can actually increase your productivity and also do amazing things to help you to improve along the way in the in the industry, uh, you know, getting involved in so much things you can do, wonderful things to uh, improve your life even further, right? So today, let me just uh, start the webinar. Let me just see if you can just, yeah. So the agenda today, I will talk to you more about the speaker and then uh, the speaker will do his uh, Gen AI uh, talk. And after that, we are going to have a post talk. We're going to talk about all the courses that NPC Lehigh has to offer. And then after that, which we'll have a live uh, Q&A session. So well, keep those questions coming uh, during the talk and we'll try to address those uh, questions that you might have, some clarifications after the, the talk, all right? So we're going to keep it to the uh, live Q&A session. Okay, without further ado, let me just uh, introduce you to the speaker. Today's speaker, we have this, this uh, gentleman. Okay, his name is Mr. Pranav Dubey. Okay, Pr Pranav Dubey is a uh, business intelligence specialist. He has the overall uh, eight years work of working experience. He holds a MBA and a, a postgrad uh, and in the digital marketing in finance and marketing. But of course, when he first started out, he has an analytical career in S&P, capital IQ. He has worked in, in areas such as big data and at the analytical tools. And later he went to this fantastic company called Zomato. Uh, he has worked on data management and predictive analytics. And of course, he has a very wonderful uh, uh, what I call education career. Uh, he has a second post degree uh, in data science and business analytics. He has been, always been a passion for education field in the, in the, in the area of uh, freelance training in data analytics. Of course, currently he's a, a senior manager with uh, training operations in Delta Singapore, one of our training partners. He has been delivering uh, training sessions and providing technical and analytical consulting in the area of data science and business analytics. But of course, when it comes to generative AI, he's very passionate about, uh, about the developments of generative AI. He has, he has conducted many of numerous uh, trainings and talks about it. Okay, with, without further ado, let's uh, welcome him to talk to you more about the generative AI space. Okay, Mr. Duby. Okay, thanks, Edmund. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon, and hope you all are good and uh, energetic to go for this uh, webinar and to look at many new things about generative AI. And uh, also, we are going to explore some generative AI tools and technologies. Let me share my screen. I believe it's visible. I'm going to talk a few things about generative AI in general, and also at the I'm also going to show you some um, demonstrations on some popular tools related to generative AI. Uh, some of which you may have already heard of, but still we are going to look at some of those. Uh, just to start, this image that you see on the screen that was created using generative AI. Okay, so I had not got it clicked in any studio or with any camera, uh, but I gave a few photos and it created, it transformed the image and put the tie and the shoot and the coat and the sort. <laughs> okay. Um, what we are going to look at or what I'm going to mainly talk about in general, what is the uh, journey of generative AI? Whenever I'm going to say gen AI, that means generative AI. Uh, we are going to look at some key concepts and technologies. And then we will look into some applications, some huge cases, and how in different industries, generative AI is being used, and for what purposes, how can we create some unstructured data? So remember this term, unstructured data. I will talk about it later on. And then definitely we will have some Q&A, whatever questions you may have uh, related to the topic, related to the course, we can discuss it. But before I proceed, if uh, I, I want you to share in the chat, uh, if you have used AI um, in your daily life, do you use AI? If yes, in what form? Where do you see AI? Just give me some examples as well. Where in your day-to-day -day work or life you use AI?
OK. Uh, some uh, we are saying no, never, then in banking, mid journey, chat GPT, uh, Dolly 3. Uh, then for writing tools, RPA. Uh, for RPA, I believe um, you might be using either UI path or Power Automate. Uh, Copilot, Nelson, you are using Copilot. Probably you are using Microsoft products, uh, be it um, Excel or Word or PPT or Power BI. You are using Copilot over there. Richard, you say that um, you ask questions via chat GPT. Yes, that's the most common use that we see um, in generative AI. And uh, I will also show a few things over there just for those who may not be aware of the tools. In banking, uh, Henry says in banking, um, Jamaica says chat GPT. Yes, chat GPT also has, um, I mean, if you are using free version, then you have limited options. And if you are using uh, plus or premium, you can use chat GPT in your business optimization also. Um, Mr. Rakesh, you mentioned to create images for new, okay, for any new documents or, or any, let's say marketing campaign, you want to create images that can be done. Uh, dashboard processing, um, example, flagging potential issues in audit. So basically you are doing the monitoring of your machine learning models using generative AI. Nelson, you say Canva. Yes, Canva also has generative AI features. Bot charts also there. Silly, ineffective chatbots. Yes, that's true. Actually, I'm going to show you with chat GPT also that what um, maybe some silliness it can introduce in, in its answers. So we will see that uh, we will see that as well. You by company, just chat boxes. Okay. Okay, I, I see a lot of uh, a lot, lot of uh, examples. Thank you everyone for, for participating and uh, for sharing as well. And yeah, in case you are coming across any questions, you can put that as well. Good, uh, thanks for sharing. What do you think in Google services, do we have AI? Do we have AI in Google services? How so? Can you give any one example? Bard Sora. Okay, everyone, remember the question I asked about generative AI. Uh, sorry, I, I asked about AI. If you look at my question, it was, do you use AI or have you used AI anywhere? But all the examples that you are giving is generative AI. So generative AI is one subset of AI. I will talk about the difference actually. But yes, um, whatever answers that you are giving are also correct. Generative AI is also a AI. I see some answers, marketing research, um, Gmail, Smart, Compo, GS. In fact, the grammar um, identification and suggestions also are generative AI because generating the text for you, it's suggesting the text for you. Now, remember unstructured data I mentioned earlier. Unstructured data is what? You can't put into tabular format, be it image, video, text. You can't put that into a tabular format in Excel. So generative AI is mainly primarily used for um, unstructured data and data generation. And that's what we have been, uh, you may have uh, done previously. Google Translate, Google Maps also everywhere. We have kind of AI and Gen AI. What do you think about elevators? Are AI based on elevate, uh, based on AI? Elevators based on AI? Any answer? Yes. Okay. We are getting maybe yes. Depends on the model. Maybe uh, signaling probably. Okay. Okay. Uh, elevators based on programming. Um, okay. Demand driven in elevators. I'm talking about the elevator in your building. Um, you press, let's say, uh, four or five uh, from ground floor, it goes certain levels. Um, is that uh, AI? Ask the engineers. Actually, engineers also may not know the basic difference. <laughs> okay, everyone, elevators are also actually AI machines. 
Now, sometimes when we talk about AI, we, we get confused with machine learning. We think that, okay, AI is a very advanced thing. No, AI can be very basic rule-based programming language. Rule-based programming models can also be AI. So have a look at this image, artificial intelligence. So let's say we have a very big subset, a very big set of data science. In data science, we have artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can be very basic rule-based programming. There is a rule in elevators. You are on ground floor, you want to go on fifth floor, you press button five, it will cover certain distance, four units to go from first to fifth floor. And then it will open the door. So it's just a rule-based programming. It's not learning on its own. It's not learning from your, from your expression that this person is sad or this person is carrying a towel in hand. Maybe this person wants to go to swimming pool. So let's go to that level where we have swimming pool. The elevators do not do that, right? So um, it's not machine learning, it's AI. But yes, in AI also, we have subsets. We have machine learning where the machines are learning on its own and trying to replicate the human behavior. And uh, then we have deep learning. In deep learning, uh, we have a uh, kind of machine learning, but using some neural networks, some advanced algorithms, some advanced models which is more efficient compared to generic or traditional machine learning. But where comes Gen AI into this? Gen AI comes inside deep learning. So you can say that gen generative AI is a subset of deep learning. What is the model? How it works? Um, these things I may not go into very much detail because we have limited time here. In a longer session, we can talk about the differences, the models, the mathematics behind it. Um, if required. But here I'm just going to give you an introduction at a higher level. So just think that generative AI is a subset of AI, but AI can exist without generative AI. AI can exist without machine learning. Your um, In your mobile phone, when, you, um, when it recognizes your face and it unlocks, that's an artificial intelligence. It's just matching the input with input image with the stored image, if it's a match, it's unlocking the phone. It's a very basic rule-based programming. If input or new face equal to the stored image, then unlock else show error. That's a rule-based programming. It's not machine learning, okay? It's not a very advanced AI. It's just a basic rule-based programming. So yes, uh, generative AI has something like uh, in the evolution in the evolution process, AI came first and then it went uh, towards, and now we have the um, gen AI. Let's have a look at uh, what, were the, what has been the growth here. Have you watched this movie, um, The Imitation Game? Anyone has watched this movie, Imitation Game? This movie name, The Imitation Game. Have you watched this movie? Okay, so tonight, if you get time, do watch it. This movie is very interesting. Do not watch it right now, okay? <laughs> right now, just listen to me. Yes, yes, uh, that's the main lead actor name. Uh, watch it tonight or whenever you get time. And uh, you will see a very interesting, um, you, can, you can basically see that how AI or computer science evolution started. So the person, um, the lead actor uh, is acting, it's a real life based uh, story. And he's acting as a very famous scientist or mathematician uh, called Alan Turing. And he's called the father of artificial intelligence. In 1945, during World War II, he developed a model to decode German messages. So Germans were using um, uh, a machine or one line, one machine they were using called Enigma to send messages to its, its uh, like troops. Uh, however, this person, uh, this um, British mathematician was able to decode and how he was able to decode, that's how the AI started actually, rule-based programming started. So if we look at the important timelines, uh, earlier we didn't have very much um, advanced models, which were just purely rule-based, but then now language model started um, 
uh, we got language model started. And then when now we have LLM and LLM, large language models, uh, based on which we have chat GPT, we have BARD and other uh, text generative uh, machine learning models or deep learning modules we have. So that has been the journey here. If you look at company wise, then after LLM came into picture, then OpenAI started working on text-based um, generative AI models and uh, it released the chat GPT, the first version. And then later on, chat GPT also came, the one that we use 3.5 right now, or if you are using premium, then you are using 4.0. Microsoft uh, adapted it very fast, chat GPT in its own uh, environment, which is now called Copilot. Earlier it was just chat GPT chat, but now we have Copilot everywhere. And also Google has Bard. Do you know the new name of Bard? Bard has been renamed. Anyone is updated on this? Bard has been updated with what name? Correct, correct, yeah. We are going to look at that as well if you have not tried it. Okay, key concepts and technologies um, or techniques into this field. I will not go into a lot of things. I will not go into detail of a lot of things. I'm just going to mention two terminologies which are important for you to understand uh, for the hands-on or the demo that I'm going to show you. So remember Alan Turing, this person, he developed a uh, he developed a machine or an algorithm where he suggested uh, the test, the experiment was called Turing test. Okay. And what he did, he mentioned that he said that okay, there will be two things. There will be one um, generator and one discriminator. So in the test, what he was doing, he was trying to develop something that if I'm asking, if the human in human interrogator is asking a question to two things or to two entities, one is another person, a real human, and second one is a machine. And then let's say answers are coming. At what point of time or how advanced my machine is that it can give an answer which is similar to the human answer. So if the answer given by the machine is similar to the human answer and the interrogator is not able to detect, that means this is very advanced uh, machine or this is intelligent machine. Uh, that's how actually generative AI came into picture. Generative AI or machine learning. In machine learning, what we are doing? In generative AI, what we are doing? Using chat GPT, we are developing or we are creating some text which looks like a person has written it. So same way here, in Alan Turing test, in the Turing test also, he did the same thing. He was trying to write algorithms for machines or for softwares which would give the answers similar to human answers so that the interrogator is not able to identify if this answer is real machine answer or a human answer. Okay, and when it looks similar, that's an intelligent machine. And that's what we have in chat GPT also. So sometimes one of you mentioned that it's sometimes it gives silly answers. That's correct. Actually, sometimes this is will be able to give you silly answers. And uh, that kind of says that there's a lot for the improvement, a lot of a scope in for the improvement of the uh, generative AI machines as well. But companies are using it. So I came across these two terms. I mentioned these two terms, generative, a generator and discriminator. So think of another example here. You are doing a fake currency printing. Please do not do this. But let's assume you are doing it, a fake currency printing, and police is going to discriminate or in the banks, they are going to find out if it's a real or fake. So they have some samples. They know how a real currency looks like or currency notes look like. And then if a fake currency is coming up and they are able to correctly identify this is fake, that means generator is not advanced enough, is not good enough. But there will be a time that this fake currency will appear just like a real currency and discriminator it will not be able to identify. That means the generator is very advanced. 
That's how generative AI works. That's the main thing in gener generative AI. You are creating images using mid journey or some other application. So we are going to try one or one or two, and uh, it's you are able to identify if it's a real or not. Okay. So we will try some of those. We will try some of those. Now, some applications and use cases, there are actually many. Gen AI is everywhere uh, in data analysis, data science. Gen AI is a part of that um, in marketing. Everywhere, gen generative AI is there. One of you had mentioned about market segmentation. Uh, when I asked you that where AI is being used, you mentioned market segmentation. Everyone, you see here, this digital marketing. In digital marketing, we do segmentation. We do customer segmentation. Everyone, open your mobile phone, go to your mobile phone, open any social media app. So I'm also going there. I'm going to open my LinkedIn in my phone. Open any social media app in your phone. And go to, so let me write the instructions. Open any social media app in your phone. Uh, go to any sponsored or promoted post. Click on basically the advertisement on ads. Click on the three dots, which is ellipsis button. Ellipsis button of that post. And then click on why am I seeing this ad? and read the answers. No need to read out, but just read to yourself. So I am also going there and um, I'm opening LinkedIn and uh, I got an, one advertisement for we go pro. I'm clicking on that. And why am I seeing this ad? It gives me three answers, at least two answers. It wants to wants to reach out to members with similar company size that's the first thing it's saying and the second thing it's saying that based on country so it's basically targeting location data so since in my linkedin profile let's say i have given uh, the location and it's able to track the my company and the company size it's giving me these advertisements based on these two information in your case, you will see different inform, different answers depending on what advertisement do you see. So everyone, this analytics is happening using AI. And if you post something on your social media app, which is, let's say, threatening or something which is not good as per the law of the country, um, the, the government agency will be able to, the law and order agencies will be able to identify. So they're also what they are doing. They are doing text analytics text analytics they are using and they are using on a real time basis using the help of either deep learning or generative AI. Okay. Hope that's good. So it's everywhere. It's everywhere in self-driving cars also claim prediction everywhere. Uh, we have analytics and we have generative AI uh, or advanced usage of AI we have. Generative AI market is in, in Singapore alone is going to reach uh, 1.12 billion. By the end of this year, we will see how much we uh, uh, how much we have. But yeah, the growth has been phenomenal. Actually, a uh, lot of companies are investing into it. The market growth is kind of uh, contributed by many uh, uh, many technologies, technology players such as these companies. You may have heard of some of these names. Um, a very common one, I will say, which is not basically here, I believe. Let's say Grammarly. You use Grammarly, let's say, in your um, in your Chrome. And when you are writing an email, it alerts you that this spelling is wrong or correct and so on. So there also we have text analysis happening. That's also kind of uh, suggesting you um, phrases, su suggesting you words. That's also we have uh, generative AI. Character.di, that's also, that's correct. Thanks for sharing. So we have these uh, companies and these technologies as well. In healthcare, we have many, uh, many uh, huge cases, automatic administrative tasks. You want to look for the, uh, let's say, um, face recognition-based attendance, fingerprint-based attendance. 
those things are happening in diagnosis also in diagnosis imaging um, also gen ai is working i remember um, once i read an article that uh, apple watch uh, apple health uh, app was able to predict the heart attack and alert the family or emergency contact of a person just depending just uh, looking at the data just analyzing the real time data of that person so that's actually happening a lot of uh, in a lot of places a drug discovery development also in all um, development of the drugs and uh, in the research sector in medical industry also we have a lot of places where uh, gen ai actually working um we have in finance as well you want to look at a stock price prediction you want to um figure out that okay where do you want to invest depending on various inputs now it's important that you are giving correct inputs to get a, a fair, get a correct output also sometimes actually many times if our inputs our prompts our questions are not correct our tool is not going to give us appropriate answers and that's a very big challenge and the main challenge behind this is the lack of data if when you use chat gpt let's say and for those who have used it when it gives you an answer after giving answer it also asks you about the feedback if you are giving thumbs up that means it's going to um, include that generated answer as a possible answer for the future questions which are similar to your question so when the data is getting generated by you giving thumbs up or thumbs down model is learning in the back end and it's improving its features improving its generation um, generative uh, capabilities for the future questions or for the future prompts in finance also we have improved risk assessment you want to look at default loan defaults let's say uh, credit scoring you want to uh, analyze um you want to do text analysis of credit scoring you can do that as well uh text generation in uh, in the research also in financial research also we do a uh, synthetic data generation also we try to do for there also we can actually use it so this is in in finance in logistic and supply chain also we have it uh, you want a uh, real time tracking you want to uh, look at uh, you want to analyze the data you want to uh, track the orders all these things also can be done you also want to set up a pipeline um, that also can be done in case you are doing marketing in marketing you want to generate images you can use this dolly uh, you can use uh, the uh, for chat gpt uh, premium you can use to generate the images also and uh, same way goes for for bard as well real time tracking real time alerts anyone here use power bi service do you use power bi service for alerts anyone power bi service platforms okay So in Power BI service, uh, it can generate alerts. Let's say you are a business manager, and um, or let's say you are a sales manager, and you are trying to target that. You are trying to set up an alert that when my sales goes down, let's say by certain benchmark, if it has gone down below this, then send me an alert. That can be done in Power BI service. Same way in Tableau. So in these business 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 analytical tools are also using generative AI. And also, if you are using Chat GPT, so those using those things also you can do the automation. One of you mentioned about um, RPA. In RPA also, we can set up such alerts, and everywhere we can generate um, the analysis that okay, why this went down? Why our sales went down into this year, or into this quarter, or into this region? Uh, i will show some demo if possible if time permits i can try to show you that as well on maybe on power bi uh, to see how the in, how the text generation analysis generation is happening using generative ai in power bi as well uh, we have uh, huge cases in uh, data science model training also like let's say you want to forecast something so you want to set up a pipeline about data collection you want to uh look at data pre processing you want to clean the data data model training in machine learning you are doing you want to optimize the performance of the models uh, that also can be done uh, and then generate the insights and do the evaluation on that 
uh, understand the model performance and then uh, you want to watch it or monitor real life real time that also can be done in the retail also we have uh, this uh, uh, feature uh, you have customers uh, basically engagement you want to look at so we have chatbots yes some chatbots may not give appropriate answers but it's all about the data on what data you are training the uh, you are training your chatbots so if you are giving more data and with time the generative ai is going to be uh, is going to improve actually why because we have more data now with lack of data none of our model will work just remember everyone that when covid started happening um in january february 2020 there was no vaccine why because there was no data and people were also kind of confused government was also kind of confused that okay what restrictions they should put they didn't have any data to support their, um, let's say, advisory or suggestions or orders that, okay, uh, we will not go out. People will not go out or they will not go to in, in the crowd. They have to wear masks. Now, when the data started coming up, then they started to analyze and then they thought that, okay, no, we have analyzed the data. And if we maintain a six feet, um, six feet distance, there's a less chance of COVID spread. So now a new guideline came that maintained a social distance of six feet. So these are the, this is a very big challenge. Lack of data is a very big challenge in the model training also. Generative AI also has challenges, but still many companies are actually using it. I have worked with some projects uh, on some projects with some companies. Uh, for example, let's say GIC. GIC is a Singapore-based company, very big, you know that. Um, and uh, it uses chat GPT in almost all of its operations. So people want to write email, they use chat GPT to suggest an email reply to them or to do the automation also that if this type of review is coming up or this type of email is coming up, send this reply. Uh, they do this in all their meetings also, uh, middle, meeting summary they want to create, they use chat GPT for that. So chat GPT is also being used by many, but yeah, different uh, platforms are there. Uh, notice here, this is one example that how uh, it is going to generate. So ask Lily to be the last minute supervisor for something and so and so. And then the co-pilot in Microsoft is able to generate the email. You do not need to spend a lot of time and then the email can be sent. So this is Copilot working in Outlook. So if your company uses Copilot, you can, just a moment. If your company uses Copilot with Microsoft products, you can actually use it, uh, use it uh, at a lot of places. Um, same way we have in Microsoft Excel also, you want to do data analysis, uh, you can install uh, a Copilot add-on, but yeah, this is for the premium. You, you have to use the premium features, I believe, or you have an enterprise version, a special enterprise version uh, in which Copilot will be there. And then you can use it. It can help you analyze the data. Notice there, there was a data and the prompt was that analyze this quarter's business results and summarize three key trends. And it's giving you the key trends. So you do not need to spend a lot of time to analyze the data. Now, if you think that because of these features, um, let's say, um, AI is going to kill our jobs. What do you think, everyone? Do you think that AI will kill our jobs? Will AI kill our jobs? What do you think? Okay, those who are using, uh, saying yes or no, whatever, just give one liner. Why? Why do you think? Um, it depends in a very safe answer. <laughs> I will take example of any job um, and uh, then suggest augment our work to some jobs. Okay. AI needs human to do programming. Nowadays, we have um, AI based models which can generate programming also. Uh, like it can do the coding as well. The repetitive task, I'm getting some, um, so only certain kind of jobs like repetitive task. Because you need the person to be able to ask intelligent questions to the AI. That's a very good thing, a very good pointer, everyone. Um, 
you need to ask good question to get good output also. We have to upgrade to use AI to do higher value added output. That's very correct, actually. You see, why generative AI is in demand right now? Because it can optimize, it can optimize your business processes, it can save money. It can, it's very cost efficient. It can save money to the businesses. And the end goal of any business is what? Making profit. All companies want a com they have a common goal. It doesn't matter what their mission and vision are. But the common goal is that they want to make profit. They want to cut uh, cost, cost. They want to cut cost. Okay. So generative AI can help them in doing so. So what we have to do, we as an uh, employee or we as a potential candidates, what we should do, the best way is to, uh, the best thing is that we upgrade ourselves. We learn how to use chat GPT. We can't force companies to not use chat GPT or generative AI, but we have to upgrade ourselves with chat GPT or generative AI tools and advanced analytical tools. Um, not completely, okay, I got another answer, not completely because there will be still be someone who fixes the bug. That's correct. Um, there are certain kinds of jobs which may get replaced by AI. However, they still need human intervention. Remember everyone, in any model implementation, in any software, in any machine also, we need to have monitoring. So for that purpose, we need human intervention. Yes, the number of such jobs will be less but it's still needed, okay? And then there will be more jobs, uh, different types of jobs that, that will come up. Remember in 1990s, when uh, computers came into financial sector, everyone started saying that, okay, this will take away our jobs, but that's not true. When computers came, they have, they changed the type of work and it gener helped uh, to generate a lot more jobs. Maybe Gen AI will also do the same, but it's just that we have to be ready for it. Okay. Okay, I see some more answers. Even to write post, you need the person to define the text. You need to define the input, the parameters, the argument. That's correct. It's essentially garbage in, garbage out. That's correct. If you are giving your inputs are wrong, your output will also be wrong. Uh, correct, yeah. I see some questions in q and I will answer that in the q and session. I just want to go on just one or two demo on Gen AI as well. Uh, notice here, uh, those who have worked on Power BI, this is a Power BI dashboard. This is from um, one of our sessions in on, on Power BI. I'm going to show just one thing, how um, it can help us analyze the data. So everyone, let's say I have a sales analysis dashboard. I'm talking about it. And then you ask me that, um, what is the average sales out of these four years? Let's say very simple question. What is the average sales here of the four years or average sales by, let's say, sales by sales representatives? I want to understand. So let's say I go here. And this is preparing Q and A. Everyone Q and A. It's doing Power BI has this NLP feature, natural language processing feature, which is using advanced AI to generate output, to generate the charts. For example, let's say if I say, um uh sum of sales by sales person let me rephrase it because remember garbage in garbage out so i am going to rephrase it in a better way i believe i have sales table and in that i have sales column so notice here sum of sales by sales person uh, i will mention it like person so it's very important that you ask the correct answer, correct questions. Now my question is correct. It's able to give me. So I have in my data somewhere, I have two columns called person, which is representing sales person. And I have sales data and it's able to give me total sum of sales by sales person. So it has generated an output for me. I didn't, I do not need to create a specific chart. I can just ask the question and it will create the chart for me. If I want to change the chart, for example, let's say pie chart, I am going to ask it, do a pie chart. It's giving me a pie chart. So very interesting features are there. Generative AI has a very, very, diff like there are many tools in generative AI, 
but there are some tools like business analytical tools also which use generative AI features like this one. Same way, same way, let's say I go to, um, I want to analyze this forecasting I am doing of, let's say sales. I want to understand why this decline happened, why this decline happened. And I want to summarize, let's say I want to summarize it. I can do a right click. Uh, just a moment. Okay, I am opening into slides, so that's why it's appearing like this. I will have to open into my, let me try something else. I want to go to, let's say this feature, and I want to talk about it. And let's say I want to um, explain it. I want to analyze it. That also can be done. I have opened this into PowerPoint. So that feature is not enabled right now into this one. But in Power BI, it can also help you enable the image. It can also help you um, explain the data uh, in a very uh, uh, interesting manner. It can also help you analyze the increase or decrease depending on all other columns in the data set. Now it can really save a lot of your time. Using Copilot also actually we can do that in Microsoft products. So the tools that we have in, in generative AI are many, okay? So we are going to look at some of those, some of those we are going to actually um, uh, explore and see uh, that how these things are working. I will start with um, chat GPT. Let me go to my browser and let me open uh, chat GPT. Actually, in Google search also, I'm not sure if you use Google search, um, the search labs or not. Let's say I'm going to search for something. Um, let's say um, applications, very simple one. Applications of generative AI. Okay. I'm searching for it. Notice everyone. Do you use this feature? Experimental, uh, generative AI experimental. You use that, um, okay. So it is, it is also able to generate some, some generate some results along with the traditional result that it shows. So for that, you need to enable the search uh, labs. So those for those who do not use it later on, you can try enabling the search labs and then it will generate the images, generate the things for you, and generate the results for you. So here also Google search can also generate it. So whatever you are doing Google search, you are using for any purpose in your work, or for any research, you can actually use these features. Let me go to chat GPT. I had asked a few questions, so that might be earlier appearing, uh, but let me ask some other things. Let's say machine learning, I'm going to ask it, define or explain machine learning, okay? Explain machine learning. And let's say everyone look at my prompt, look at my question and look at the output. Now, please note the prompt, explain machine learning, and it's able to give me the definition, and then it's going to break it down. Now, if I say, it's a very big uh, paragraph, right? Big, big answer. Let's say if I say, explain, I'm going to copy this, explain machine learning to a, a graduate. Let's see. Now notice the answers are changing. The, the language, the headers, the pointers, these are also changing. So it's trying to find out some uh, words, like for example, here rules in double quotations. So it's going to understand, going to explain in those terms. Let's say if I do machine learning to a, to a teenager, Not, look at the language. It's saying, hey, you know how in your favorite video game, this and this. So it's giving reference of video game because I want to explain this to a teenager. But it was not showing the same thing when I was going to explain this to a college student, a graduate, or let's say uh, in general. And if I ask, say that explain machine learning to a five-year-old, see what you're doing. 
imagine you have a super smart robot friend so starting with that so that's the magic of generative ai it can look into your keywords now again give the correct keywords it will give you correct or the desired outputs so that's about the chat gpt here there, there are many things you let's say um in marketing let's say you are from marketing team and you want to prepare i'm going to create a new chat and let's say i'm going to create create something like um let me take any review i'm going on amazon.sg and let me see let me get any um um item let's say laptop i want to buy and let me go to any laptop here let's say this one uh we do not have many reviews so i want something where we have many reviews so let me see where we have that let's say this here we have this 3 241 review let's go there on the reviews now notice here i have this i'm going to copy this review and then i'm going to chat gpt i'm going to say that um, find out the sentiment of the of a customer who had bought a laptop from my shop he has given this review and then i mention this okay and here we go so it's time to explain the customer the sentiment of the customer if i say that mention mention the sentiment uh as either good or bad good okay so how actually it's going to help us how it's going to help us in the business everyone please note that when let's say um, you are doing a marketing or or let's say you are a product manager and um, people are giving the reviews the text reviews on your service or or on your product and then you do not have time to read each and every uh, review to understand if it's a good review or a bad review so then you can use these features. You can use um, tools like ChatGPT or Bard. You can integrate this in your system uh, where on real time, the reviews are coming in and it's going to create a table that, okay, this customer ID or this order ID, customer gave good or bad review or positive or negative review. So in single word, you can classify, you can classify text uh, review. So everyone, this is a classification model. Okay, so this will also, we can do we can also do a summary let's say um um global warming report um or let's say i'm just looking for article okay spelling mistake uh let's say i go here and i have one article i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to mention summarize this article summarize this article uh, uh text and here we go let's see now notice that i have many words in the article it's going to give me just a small paragraph then i say summarize it in um 100 words and here you go you do not need to read each and everything doesn't need to reach, read each and everything and then it can give you highlight like this it can also help you generate some articles let's say uh, you want to say that you want to create something for um, linkedin post and uh, on this topic uh, these are the kind of audience you want to target write me an article for that so a lot of things actually it can do uh, like, like, like this let's see some other things also let's say you want to generate uh, search labs i showed you how to use the search labs let me go to dolly i will have to go to actually dream studio for this 
Dream Studio uses uh, Dolly is not free. In free version, you can't use the image generation. So I'm going on uh, another website, which is Dream Studio. It uses um, a Dolly uh, generative AI feature to generate the images. So here I'm going to ask it uh, something. Let's say I'm going to ask. So this is something that I have asked previously. Let me delete and maybe ask something else. Uh, let's say, um, a house in the middle, a house in a valley, in a valley, and then I'm going to generate some image, let's say. So let me generate it. Let's see what it's giving us. Like this. So this is animation. If you want to use a, a like a real looking images, you will have to use the pro version for this one. But I'm just going with the free ones for marketing purpose. In a valley, let's say I am going to change it. A zoom background. A zoom background with a minimalistic view. I'm going to create one. I have selected two, so it is going to create two images. And two images will be slightly different from one another. Okay, it's giving only one. Okay, here we go. One is not getting loaded, I believe. Need to refresh. So notice a slightly different we have here. So if you are giving it, let's say, living room and something like a um so some earlier i had given living room so it was giving me two different images and then i asked it, it to add an element it added that as well so this type of image also can be created now we also have for um you have you some of you mentioned about uh, sora so if i look for sora here it can create some videos notice here look at this very interesting marketing videos let's say you want to create the prompt is a stylish woman walks down a tokyo street filled with warm glowing uh, warm glowing neon and so and so and notice it's able to generate this email now think of everyone those who are into video creation let's say or or animated movie creation their jobs might be at risk because of these things if these things improve okay Otherwise, the nature is going to change. The nature of the job is going to change. So you need to learn how to ask the questions. Here we have a prompt, uh, several giant woolly mammals approaching this and this, and here it's showing the image. It's uh, just a few seconds. With this uh, Sora, I believe you can create image uh, videos up to one minute, the duration up to one minute. So this also can be actually used like this. Um, I can also do, uh, there, is a, there is one website, and all these things actually we try to do into our Gen AI course. I believe one of you had asked a question that do we have generative AI courses at LHUB? Yes, we have. And in one of those courses, actually, we do this. Uh, let me show you just a sample here how we uh, can generate images also. So notice my, my, um, my prompt here. I asked it, generate a German man image of German man eating ice cream in Singapore. It gave me this. But then I asked in front of MBS. So it added MBS as well. Now notice everyone, this image looks completely realistic. Although here we have some errors showing up, kind of glitch in the matrix, but it's completely realistic if you look at only this part. So can you differentiate between a real and a fake image? Remember our, uh, I mentioned about generator and discriminator. So there also we are doing certain kind of things, generating and then we are uh, identifying that it's a real or not. If you find it good enough, you vote for it. It will go to the model. And uh, yes, I can tell the image is fake because notice here, it's not gen generated um, very uh, nicely. And also here, I also see some problems here. But think of it like the model is still, uh, Learning, okay. <laughs> That's a good observation. I didn't notice that. <laughs> That's a good observation, by the way. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I was looking at the technical things, not not the image elements, but <laughs> that's a good one. So arts, the medium is uh, out of place. But the point here is that you can create images like this. You uh, for your marketing pitch or anything for your website where we have copyright problems. Uh, if you are using some images, then just create ones, generate ones. Now. There are certain things about generation of um, new images or videos. It's about the copyright problems. Usually, generative AI features that we have or the tools that we have, um, they try to mimic or copy the existing articles, existing images. But there are certain tools like this free pick. This image really does not exist. Everyone, had, have you heard of this website? Um, this person does not exist. Open it. Everyone open this website. This person does not exist.com. Open this website. And refresh it. Refresh the page. And each and every time you will get a new face. And this person really does not exist. This, this girl, little girl, does not exist in real life. But it's a, um, it's a generated image. So you can use this image for your marketing. No one will um, sue you for, your, for the copyright infringements or anything like that. Okay, uh, now what's happening here? What's working here? So at the bottom of this website, you will see when the image is getting generated, you will see here, it's saying a style GAN2. This is Generative Adversarial Neural Networks uh, 2.0 version and Keras is the library name. So it is using machine learning algorithm, deep learning algorithm. And in that deep learning, it's using generative uh, uh, adversarial networks to generate this image. Okay, so um, this type of things also you will explore that what is the actual coding behind um, image generation. These things also you will get to know um, uh, when you go for a longer session, but here I'm not going on the coding part. Okay, if you really want to go into the technical stuffs. Same way, uh, one last demo I will show here. Uh, this is something uh, about uh, video generation. So genmeo.ai. Now notice here, I had generated something that my prompt was, uh, let me see my prompt or I can just create a new one. Um, we'll create a new one. Um, a horse in front of MBS in Singapore, let's see. What is generating? Kind of GIF images, you can say small image it's going to generate. Now everyone think of it like just for fun, I'm giving a horse in front of MBS, but think of it like uh, you want to generate some animation for your videos, for your marketing campaigns. Um, and it uh, doesn't matter from which industry you are from, in which business sector you are working. You have marketing team, you have operations team, you have HR team. Um, you, you have some uh, common operation irrespective of the in the business industry. And everywhere you have data, everywhere you need to do data analytics, everywhere you need to generate certain uh, content for marketing and for uh, marketing campaigns mainly. So there actually you can use these things. Now, how realistic the image is going to be, that depends on which model you are using. Uh, if you are using mid-journey website, uh, generative AI you are using over there, that, gi that gives kind of a, um, more realistic images. And here we are not getting a realistic image, but actually you have certain settings also that actually um, you can do. Now, how it works, these things you can learn um, into a longer course. So here I'm not going on, on that part uh, because we can do some modifications to, to, to change it as well. I mentioned about Gemini. Gemini also is kind of kind of chat, similar to chat GPT. Um, if I go here in the chat, 
notice I had asked for a prompt just before the session, I tried to prepare some prompts. And here, notice um, it's giving me some things like, um, I want to write an article on short-term and long-term trends in EV market, and I want to post it on LinkedIn. Can you write this for me? Uh, please include facts as well in the mark in, in the article. So it's adding some facts, means it's adding the numbers as well. Okay. Now it's these numbers are true or not, you have to validate this. It's also giving the the source, but also validate it. So if and if it's able to generate, you need human intervention to validate the thing that it's doing or the output that it's giving just to add more uh, credibility to your uh, the output that you have got and the thing that you want to use. Okay. Okay, so that, that's about uh, a few things, a few demo on different tools of generative AI, everyone. Um, I wanted to highlight these things to you. I wanted to uh, share uh, uh, more commonly popular use cases and uh, uh, AI platform, generative AI platform and technologies. I wanted to look look at uh, the things which uh, uh, you are going to explore in a longer session mainly. Um, here, I Desmond, I will pass it to you, and we can open for Q and A because I have seen that there are many questions in the in the chat. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, thank you, Prada, for your informative uh, uh, presentation on generative AI. I want you to share a screen, just a quick one. Just a quick one there. Okay, a quick one. okay we have uh, uh, two quarters with NTCL Hub uh, from, that is developed. Uh, with, uh, I'm in charge of these two courses. The first one is, is uh, generative AI for business professionals, uh, chat GPT, media synthesis, and beyond. This is the course where just now uh, Prana have already demonstrated some of the key tools that you have already uh, kind of a sneak review. Okay, this two days course will be touching on generative AI for non tech professionals like yourself who are not into uh, tech. You can able to use to discover that using covering all these key concepts, use cases as what uh, Prana have already covered and applications in different industries. Like, of course, this course right, is designed for non-professionals who want to learn the basics of generative AI, how they can they use it in their respective field. As you can see how Prana can really use a bit of prompting and show you different tools, how you can actually use the right for marketing campaigns, do some very fantastic video generation, just a few uh, uh, seconds or minutes just to make sure that it gives some value to it. And this course will help you to learn how to use this uh, generative AI for content generation, Audio synthesis can use great music, like I was told. Like. And of course, you can also have this uh, quantitative uh, data analysis and market research, and also chrome engineering uh, to help you add value to uh, across your uh, industries. Like. Okay, so there are a lot of objectives that is uh, in this course. Okay, we're going to teach you more about the principles and concepts of generative AI. We're going to evaluate all the uh, what we call use cases. Uh, in the uh, journey out for your perspective and industry. Of course, you want to understand more about what are the limitations and ethical consideration of generative AI. And of course, you also learn how to develop and use generative AI models using like chat GPT, bar, and so forth, so forth, so forth. Okay, you also learn all these uh, case studies. And of course, the second course that we have is let me see the slides working. Okay, there's a in AI innovation unleashed. That is, they're giving the the range of from engineering. Well, quite a mouthful. Huh? Yeah, but this is the, the way how uh we're going to explore what this uh, two days uh, it's a very really intensive course. Huh? So you need kind of a bit of uh, understanding how ChatGPT is like. Going to teach you how prompt engineering is all about and how to how to be uh equip you with the skills and knowledge to uh, harness the power of GPT through prompt engineering. Okay, we're going to teach you about key concepts and principles of AI. Very important, huh? Uh, a bit of a uh, theory behind it, especially GPT and of course the various uh, application uh, in various domains. Uh. Of course, we're going to teach you more about clear and effective prompts, how do you extract what you want using clear typing prompting. Okay, We're going to teach you on techniques and improve your quality and the relevance of search through GPT models. Uh. We're going to help you to fine tune uh, the GPT model performance through prompt modifications. And of course, we're going to help you go through different AI tools and platforms. And of course, we're going to address what the ethical consideration, what can you do, what you cannot do with uh, ChatGPT and other AI system. And of course, lastly, we're going to explore more advanced topics in uh, prompt engineering techniques like uh, few short learning and conditional generation. These are very deep uh, uh, things that like so, we're very interested in AI. Uh, so, yes, so I have a uh, QR code for you to scan. Okay, you can take this down. This QR code will be linked you to our WhatsApp 
or any of our consultants, you uh, any of the courses you might be interested, and you can reach out to us. We can we can, uh, can actually help you to uh uh see what courses are available and any spots are available. So you can actually uh sign up your interest. Okay, yeah. So I think let's I uh, just keep it on for a few seconds. And uh yes, Corona. Uh, we have a very few interesting. We will go through the Q and A session while we leave the screen on. Okay. So we're going to tackle some of the few questions that uh, the chat has uh, have. Hopefully that's sure. uh, yeah. Sure, okay. Um, so I got some questions in the um, in the Q&A and there are some questions in the chat also. So in the chat, the latest question that we have is about the course. Um, these are on Zoom or physical class. So everyone, um, the courses that um, Edmund mentioned uh, one on generative AI and one on prompt engineering. Uh, both are available um, online as well as uh, for classroom sessions. Uh, you can, this one can answer that one that, or you can look at the website. What I can do, um, I can copy paste the links of the courses and uh, the schedules in the schedules also, you can see these are online or uh, physical classroom uh, courses. So these are the two uh, links of these two courses. Uh, to get more information on that. Now I'm going on q and uh, One question, the first question that I got at what are the current Gen AI courses uh, that I have mentioned here. Uh, second question, um, um, in Instagram, we watch certain ads, videos, then it shows similar posts. Uh, is it generative AI? Uh, Minakshi, you asked this question. Uh, so everyone, um, when you see some recommendations, let's say you are buying something on Amazon or Shopee, or you are watching Netflix or Instagram, or you are watching something, and then you get recommendations, those are not generative AI, those are recommended systems. However, that recommendation system also uses advanced machine learning, similar to artificial intelligence or deep neural networks. Uh, so it's not generative AI, it's not generating on its own. However, it's analyzing your activity and based on that it's suggesting something else for example on netflix if you are watching a movie which has a tag of action or action movie then let's say um i have watched a movie let's say i have watched avengers movie and you have also watched avengers movie then um next one if i watch let's say um some other action movie let's say gi joey um, then it will go as a recommendation to you also. Why? Because we have watched, um, we have similar interest of watching action movie and there are some other movies into action tag, or you can say with like in Instagram, we have hashtags. So if you watch a video with certain hashtags, uh, the same hashtag, if uh, there are some other videos that will appear as a recommendation to you. So that's how actually it works in Instagram. Um, we have some machine learning courses also on the recommendation system as well. Uh, but yeah, it's not using generative AI over there. Mm. Okay. Um, coming to next question. Um, if the work we do holds a sensitive public data, how can we leverage AI and not compromise this uh, self assured AI solution? Okay. This is a very big challenge um, about this PDP. And uh, that's why many companies still do not use generative AI tools. There are many big companies, for example, banks. Banks still do not use uh, generative AI tools for uh, in all of its operations because of this fear that uh, what about the sensitive data? Um, but yes, in certain cases where the sensitive data is not required, for example, data analysis. If I if I'm in a bank and if I have to analyze, let's say um, a particular customer will will. Um, go on a loan default or not, default on my loan uh, or not. So for that purpose, I do not need the email ID, phone number, uh, and the name and address of the customer. I need demographic information, for example, income, age, number of family members, uh, nationality, um, number of years into service, house is, uh, is a house owner or living on rent, and so and so. So these things are not, uh, um, you can say, uh, these are generic data. These are not um, uh, these are not confidential information of one particular customer because customer details we have deleted and then whatever is left, we are using that and then we are putting into our generative AI model or machine learning model and then getting the output. So self-hosted AI solutions have these things. However, 
Um, however, we have to be careful at what data we are giving. We have to be more careful uh, while using the generative AI features. And, uh, uh, and if it's a self-hosted, let's say if it's not using internet, if it's using intranet, then it's good. Uh, for example, uh, this company called HD Engineering, they do not use internet in their company premises. They use intranet. Uh, so in intranet, if they're using it, it's okay. It's not a problem. Whatever the data is going, it's going within the company itself. Uh, produce themselves fine too. Yeah, that's correct. Another next question, how did chat GPT come up with different uh, variations to answer example, five-year-old to an adult? Okay. Uh, did all the originate from a person input the data? Okay. Uh, so first thing that it identifies the keywords that what question I'm asking, what keywords are there? So when I uh, when, when I was showing you the demo, I mentioned about explain machine learning and then I gave uh, different keywords next to it. And depending on that, it was changing the uh, answer. It was getting different variations. So how it's coming up, think of it like you have to teach um, different age groups of certain concept, then you are also going to think of that what example I should give which are more relevant to this age group. So same thing chat GPT is also doing. Now from where it's getting this idea? It's getting the idea from its model training. Chat GPT has been trained on more than a trillion different parameters. What are parameters? Age, let's say, age, ethnicity, um, nationality, income, so and so, and all these things. So one trillion different columns have been used to train a chat GPT model. So it's giving that more appropriate or accurate answers. If you do not like an answer, you can ask it to regenerate. You can tell it that it's a wrong answer. It's not appropriate. And then in the next time, it will say, sorry, I apologize. And then it will regenerate a better answer. So that's how it's learning. It's learning on a real time basis. So someone may have um, voted it that, okay, this answer is appropriate for five years old. And hence, it's showing it to you also. I hope that answers the question. Then we have only asking, how can we use Gen AI or chat GPT for administrative process like claims and invoice survey? Actually, we can automate the things. We can, um, like, like, let's say you want to prepare questions for survey, okay? Then just ask chat GPT that create, uh, or you can go to Microsoft and then you can use Copilot and then you can ask that uh, uh, these are my target uh, employees and they are, from, they are from this department on this context or, or for this purpose, I want to uh, create a form, a survey form, generate the form for me. It will help you out um, with the questions, appropriate questions. Either you can copy paste those questions in your form or uh, you can use a, BB, a VBA, VBA codes, to generate the form for you on its own, uh, and then you can do the simple modifications. To be frank, the VBA codes are not very much uh, useful because still you have to get involved to, in the modification of the um, of the output. I have tried VBA uh, with PPT. For example, I ask um, a chat GPT to um, create some slides and write its VBA codes. Then I put the VBA code in my Microsoft PowerPoint. It's a rubbish. I have to do a lot of <laughs> uh, uh, formatting and modifications uh, thereafter. Uh, so I will not suggest that, but yes, uh, for the survey question, uh, the session that I gave you, you can follow that. And in certain administrative tasks like claims also, let's say you can automate that whoever is, um, let's say um, for transport uh, claims, someone is, is sending grab um, invoice, okay? A posting grab invoice and claiming, let's say $50 then you do not need to spend time to open the image, look at the receipt, match the value $50 with the um, receipt, um, um, uh, whatever you mentioned in the receipt. You can use Gen AI to, indicate, to identify the text, the total fare, and then process the claim on its own. So that can uh, help in the automation part, okay? Uh, next question we have, how certain um, can we be 100% certain? Uh, this person really does not exist. Okay. Um, please note, there, there, there are two types of generation that happen. So one, like chat GPT, what does it? It is just copy pasting or rephrasing the existing content. So let's say it's a rephrasing existing content. That means it's using whatever is already there on internet. So when you are asking what is machine learning, it's not generating... Um, 
uh, it's whatever answer it's generating, it's uh, using the phrases, the words from different sources which are available on internet. However, this website, this person does not exist. Um, usage or uh, generative adversarial neural networks to generate the image from scratch. So it will see that, okay, this data in my database, this image is not there. For example, let's, let's say I ask you that, uh, give me, uh, draw an image, but not like these images. Then you will see those images and then you will try to create something different. So this person does not exist website using the same thing. Uh, it's all about the, again, parameter tuning. Uh, we need to pass the arguments. Uh, but yes, as far as I have seen that um, it's kind of a, a certain, I will not say 100% certain everyone, in machine learning, in deep learning, in technology, in predictions, we do not claim to be 100% sure. Otherwise, we will become God. Okay, we, we go up to 95%. So with 95% accuracy is trying to create a person's image which does not exist. Okay, so it's always at 95% accuracy. Even if it's 99%, we will we claim to be at 95% only. Okay, I'm going on the next question. Is there any resource to learn how to integrate AI tools to our work apps um, using AI to automate? Actually, there are um, many things. Um, for example, if you go to NTUC LH website, you will see some courses like Power Automate. Or there are some courses um, uh, which are on RPA uh, where we use UI path. So there we do not need to uh, explicitly mention the inputs. You can um, you can take out uh, you can create a workflow that this is how the things are going to be. You take the data, you do the automation. For example, in Power BI we do that. In Power BI we take the data. We have done let's say one day I have I have spent three four hours in the data cleaning and then I am doing the data visualization. Next day similar problems are coming up. I do not need to do the, all the data cleaning in three, four hours. Within a second, I can refresh it and all the applied steps, all the data cleaning that I have done previous day will get applied on the new data also and my data will be cleaned within a second. Okay, so so those are the things that we can use for the, for the um, uh, to automate the process. But if your question is specific to business automation, business process automation, then we have tools like RPA. Uh, we have RPA tools like UiPath, we have uh, Power Automate, we have Automation Anywhere. Uh, you can reach out to Elham uh, to uh, get to know more about those, those, those courses as well. And if you are from a company then, um, and you want to um, kind of customize it in your business process, then uh, you can let us know. We can take care of that as well. Okay, uh, next question, are there longer courses to go more in depth? Okay, uh, so these two courses that I mentioned, uh, Prompt Engineering and Generative AI, these are two-day courses, and uh, these are funded courses also. SSG funding is there, I believe, so um, you can use your credits. And uh, longer courses, if you want to go for, then we have an SCTP um, a course uh, with AI ML where you get to learn chat GPT, uh, prompt engineering, machine learning, deep learning. That's a three month course uh, in case you uh, three months in full time, in part time, a little more. And if you want to go uh, with that, you can look into that detail also. Uh, El Hub team can help you uh, sharing all the modules and the courses that we do into that program. Uh, we touch upon a lot of things, uh, advanced machine learning, deep learning, chat GPT, chat GPT for or, um, generative AI, generative AI for business and so on. So we can look into that detail as well. Um, then coming on the next question, uh, what would be the copyright concerns to AI generated content such as image or story content? Okay. If a story you are referring to the text, we have to look into which tool we are using. Chat GPT has been accused of plagiarism. Uh, it has, um, it, it gives, it uses the content of different existing, like let's say research papers without giving the references. Or sometimes it will just generate its own reference, uh, imag imagination, uh, out of its imagination. So that's a very big concern. And that's why open AI people or the CEO has been pulled in court a lot of times. Uh, that that actually uh, happened. It's a real time problem. That's a real life problem, actually. 
However, um, they are also trying to improve it and the all other, other tools also, they are also trying to improve like bar, they are also trying to improve. So uh, copyright concerns might be there right now, but gradually it's decreasing because model is improving with the new input. More data is going to get better in performance. It's going to give a more unique answer it's going to give. Uh, so in near future, these things, uh, this, this will not be a concern. Copyright concern will not be a concern anymore. Okay. Um, Okay, can chat GPT summarize the 100 page, uh, page uh, PDF report? Yes, it can do. Um, the, uh, actually, in fact, PDF also, Adobe Acrobat Reader also has uh, some um, AI based um, features which can help you summarize the PDF documents. Uh, so rather than going to chat GPT, because to use this, you have to go to chat GPT uh, premium. But without that also, you can look at some features on uh, Adobe Acrobat and over there also, it has features to summarize the documents. So even 100 page PDF, if you have, if the content is image uh, format, uh, it will not do, but if the content of this PDF is into text format, it will be able to do, it will be, it can summarize it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah so, I believe all questions are covered. <laughs> yeah, I think all questions are covered. Uh, just for a side note, as uh, one, one of my colleagues are attending to one of the questions, I think for a side note, uh, brother, I also use uh, TV, GTVT to, to suggest some um, ideas on you know, for, for people who are dating. Like, like person like me, I've, I'm romantic. So I ask, I always uh, suggest uh, GTVT to give me some uh, romantic ideas. What well, it does give me some uh, what I call uh, ideas, because like I said it in a Singapore context, it does give me some uh, places of interest, like, oh, going to the gardens of the bay, or even have a picnic in the sky by this area. So it does, uh, uh, what I call, uh, uh, take into consideration of the region they are in when you specify the place for Singapore and it does comes up a uh, few very localized uh, places which is fantastic I mean it's just uh, for sharing uh, I mean uh, for a person who is unromantic like myself I, 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 I'm clueless when my, my girlfriend gets frustrated with me or I can't like, can you know do some uh, uh, Romant can't we can't be a Casanova, like some people can actually bring their like, their girlfriends out for some things like that. But it's quite useful. I, I can I think technology is something that we can don't be afraid of. Yeah. From this session, if they are uh like Pranav had already uh shared with us and shown us there are so many possibilities they can do in, in the various industries they are in. And what I want to share is just a social part of it. I just use it as to see how ChatGPT can actually uh, make my life better. Like, yeah. That, that's actually good. Uh, um, thanks for sharing, uh, everyone. I'm going to give you two examples, one prof my professional life and one personal life. So um, when I have to prepare some content, um, I do look for, let's say, um, I, I also want to get some ideas. I asked Chad GPT to give me some agenda ideas. And then I try to modify that. I want. I, I try to contextualize that as per the uh, audience, or who, who the audience have and from where they are coming. Um, and in my, uh, whenever I plan some travel plan, if I have to make, I ask the itinerary uh, <laughs> uh, from chat GPT. Uh, this way I save my time researching a lot of things. I just uh, try to validate, okay, it has suggested me a few things. Let me validate just these and these, if these are okay. If okay, then I will just go ahead with that. So sometimes I, I do that from past, like since last year I have been doing this, Doing, doing this this, this thing it really saves a lot of time so so it's very much useful we can't we should not escape it it's uh, better if we try to escape it and if you are afraid of it definitely it will kill our jobs but if mm -hmm. we embrace it if we welcome it and we are ready to welcome it then definitely it will help us a lot in in our professional growth as well Definitely. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Pranav. Okay, so we have uh, more or less answered uh, all of our questions and we provided all our things. So do scan the QR code and also uh, WhatsApp to any of our skills consultants for the information of courses and when to attend. And uh, Most of our, our skills consultants will be more or less uh, very friendly. We will answer, try to get all your information and clarify. So uh, with that further ado, we have come to the end of our webinar. Thank you so much for attending our uh, L Hub uh, webinar series. We hope you enjoyed today's uh, uh, generative AI uh, webinar session. We hope that it has been informative. We hope that you can able take the step to uh, to learn more about generative AI. Well, there's two courses we've already uh, shown you and also for Prana. 
it was kindly uh, uh, shared his insight on what JRP AI is all about. We hope that you will take back and just reflect on what you can actually do with it. Harness that kind of technology that you can embrace it. Don't be afraid. Okay, so with that, I, uh, I'll end the session right now. Thank you so much for attending l -Hub. And uh, from here, Prano and myself, okay, we say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for attending our, our webinar series. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.